hello guys welcome to ramta solutions today as we continue with your lesson on grade 11 euclidean geometry we're looking at theorem 2 that says perpendicular bisector of a chord passes through circle center now the statement of this theorem the statement of this theorem says let me write it down to begin with the statement of this theorem says if the perpendicular bisector of a chord is drawn then the line will pass through the center of the circle let's see if the perpendicular if the perpendicular bisector of a chord is drawn then the line will pass through the center of the circle So the statement for this theorem says, if the perpendicular bisector of a chord is drawn, then the line will pass through the center of the circle. So going forward, I don't have to keep writing the statement, right? But it's okay. And even if I don't write it, somehow the theorem says it all. Perpendicular bisector of a chord passes through the circle center. So when you use this theorem, What's the reason that you must give for whatever, for the steps that you're using in this topic? So the reason you will be saying it is perpendicular bisector from center, right? From center. Yes, writing perpendicular like this is okay. Okay, so remember, um, this question says we must prove that circle center O lies on the line PR. So we are not going to draw a line RA and RB. We can readily use QA and QB. Okay, so I will begin by considering these two triangles here. Triangle QPA and triangle QPB. Okay, so I will say now this is our proof this is our proof so i will say in triangle qpa and triangle qpb okay let's look at i see we have 90 degrees here can you guys see it we have 90 degrees here that is common angle qpa is equal to angle qp B, which is 90 degrees can you guys see that okay so we have angle QPA is equal to angle QPB this is equal to 90 degrees what's the reason the reason is that it is given <laughs> it is given okay it is given this is information that's readily available on the statement or on the chart itself the diagram okay again i see that ap is also equal to pb this is given okay so ap is equal to pb what's your reason it is given now let's see if there's something else that can help us we have side I was saying angle AP, side AP and PB. Now we have side QP. Both triangle QPA and triangle QPB have side QP, right? So we can say QP equals QP. Why? It's a common sign. I know somebody says, why aren't you saying given? 
it's a common side okay it's common to both triangles right therefore we can say if this is the case I can say triangle QPA is congruent to triangle QPB what's the reason I see I used a side I also used another side and I used an angle here 90 degrees be careful I know when you see 90 degrees you will jump to a right angle hypotenuse on the side mm -mm. we didn't use the hypotenuse here we are not given any information on the hypotenuse of these two triangles so I will use side angle side right so if we had said that we can therefore conclude that the other side which is QA must also be equal to QB why are we saying that we said triangle QPA is congruent to triangle QPB if they are congruent what does it mean if they are congruent it means corresponding sides are equal and corresponding angles are equal let me show you now check this out so if we are given these are equal these are equal and obviously these are equal and these ones are equal then these ones here must also be equal right so by virtue of saying um side QA is also equal to side QB we have proven that these indeed we didn't prove that they are or we proved that they are congruent so by proving that they are congruent we therefore suggest that side QA is also equal to QB okay here is your QA it is also equal to QB so one thing you should know is this when when um, when points on the circumference are coming from a certain point within the, uh, the circle and those points their distances are equal in this case when you look at QA we said that it is equal to QB you must know that wherever these lines are coming from that point must lie on a line that's passing through the circle okay that point must lie on a line passing through the circle so let's conclude this okay let's conclude this so how we conclude this we will say that um, I was using a, a red color let me say okay all um, how should I put this okay all points on the circumference okay all points on the circumference that come from a point or not a point but from a line from a line that passes through the center from a line that passes through the center from a line that passes through the center will be equidistant will be okay let me fix this will be equidistant will be equidistant okay will be equidistant therefore in conclusion <clears throat> therefore uh, let me rephrase center O lies on the P line yes so we said all points on the circumference that come from a line that passes through the center will be equidistant therefore PR passes through the center okay PR passes through the center okay PR passes through the center okay so this is how we conclude this section okay guys this is how we conclude this section with that being said it is a wrap now see you next time and bye bye